Friends, this is a traumatic cataract with genular tear from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock. I have taken up this case for surgery. The patient is a 57-year-old lady. By this time, all the incisions have been made. Capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. And now, capsulorexis is being attempted. As you can see, the cataract is swollen and there is some amount of intumescence. And there is fibrosis of the anterior capsule superiorly. The main incision has been made at around 11 o'clock. And now I'm trying to do capsulorexis. And here, see what happens. The capsule has gone to far periphery. I've been able to bring it back, but again, at around nine o'clock, it goes again to periphery. So the idea of using this capsular bag, supporting it with CTR and Sioni ring had to be dropped and now I'm going to do SICS to deliver the nucleus making a sclerocorneal tunnel of about 6 millimeter I'm going to remove this cataract now my plan is to implant a PMMA lens with eyes in its haptics and suture these haptics to the sclera with proline. After hydrodissection and proper visco, this is visco expression of the nucleus. And now, this cortex is to be removed. What I did is I just irrigated some VSS and all the cortex came out. The posterior capsule is still there. So, what I'm doing now is um, cutting the vitreous strands that pipped into the anterior chamber and now I had to sacrifice this capsular bag because there was extension in the rexis CTR and Sioni ring could not be used and this Vitectomy is by Faro's from Oatly. Cut rate is 3500 at this moment. And this blade cuts on both sides. And the port remains open all the time. So this is called continuous flow and in effect the cutting rate is 7000 cuts per minute. Now irrigation is from the right side port and I am trimming the capsule on the left side. Vitectomy has been done very satisfactorily. And now, this is the intraocular lens. This is from Aurolav. This PMMA lens has eyes in its haptics where I can, a proline suture can be passed through this eye and the proline suture is tied by about 5-6 knots. 
both the haptics are tied similarly when the lens is outside the eye. And now this lens I am going to place on o'clock, seven o'clock. The haptics are to be placed at on o'clock and seven o'clock meridian. This is the right eye of the patient and I found this position good. Three o'clock, nine o'clock position as little cumbersome because of obstruction by the nose. And now this is the needle I am bringing it out through the side port and again it will go from the side port towards the opposite side towards on o'clock and here is the 26 gauze needle I am using a AC maintainer to keep the intraocular pressure and to do this maneuvers the antechamber is maintained the intraocular pressure is on the higher side about 60 millimeter of mercury and now the lens is to be placed inside the eye the leading haptic goes towards 7 o'clock and the trailing haptic is placed at around 1 o'clock and the sutures are pull gently the lens is nicely centered there's lot of sphincter tear and the people didn't come down and in such cases it is not a good idea to use iris claw lenses and now these rolling switches are just being after several bites into the sclera it is kept like that and in this way I found that both the haptics uh, nicely fixed and the lens is very stable this is an edited video the surgery took about one hour it is being edited to only 12 minutes and now the conjunctiva is opposed to the limbus by this releasable sutures just make three throws and pull and and cut it the scleral wound sclerocorneal wound is opposed by a single suture at the middle this suture should not be very tight just 
both the lips should be nicely opposed the threads are trimmed near the knot and then the knot is buried into the sclera and now the conjunctiva superiorly is opposed by three releasable sutures two sutures on either side then I applied one more suture in between and this is the final lavage I used tramsinolone acetate and that portion has been edited out I found that the intraocular pressure is not nicely formed so I injected some more BSS by the irrigating probe of bimanual IA in this way just direct on flow into the anterior chamber the other flow will be outside and now I filled the anterior chamber it was good it was normal this is the final picture and these are the post-op pictures first day post-op vision was 6 by 9 with 1.5 diopter cylinder at 150 degree thank you very much for watching hope this video will help you in managing your challenging cases routine cases are fine but challenging cases we do well gives lot of satisfaction so please take off challenging cases thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills